Hello and welcome to this handover video for a Porsche 718 Boxster T. This particular car is a 2019, uh, it's a 300 brake horsepower car based on a standard Boxster. Um, the Boxster T is set up more for driving pleasure than outright performance. Uh, I should just run through some of the features on the car. It will be around this specific car. Um, I may touch on some other alternatives that the car may have in terms of options, uh, but I hope you find this really useful. Starting on the outside of the car, there are a couple of different ways that you can open the front and rear luggage compartments on the car. Uh, you can either do it via the key, through pressing and holding, or you can do it via the door shuts. By pressing either the front or the rear. To open the front luggage compartment, there is a small red catch under the front, which you need to pull to the side before you lift the front luggage compartment lid. Underneath the front luggage compartment you'll notice that you have your windscreen washer fluid which is just located under here. Uh, under here you will have your battery. Uh, if you need to get to the battery for any reason, whether it might be to put a triple charger on the connections, or, or to change the battery yourself, you would need to uh, pull this cover up using that point there and this point here. Uh, your battery is located under here. If the car had centre locking wheel hubs, because it might be a spider for example, or if you have those particular wheels, uh, the centre locking hub key would be located under here as well. Uh, when you replace it, just be mindful to make sure that you get it lined up underneath here correctly and that you pull the rubbers back so that you have uh, a tighter seal under here. So, help to prevent any water ingress. You also have uh, to the side here and here your locking wheel nut key, towing eye, compressor and sealant. Uh, you also have your hazard warning triangle located under there as well. To close the bonnet you need to put your hand on the badge of the bonnet and give it a firm push. The rear luggage compartment doesn't have any catches and just very simply lifts up like so. Under here you have your engine coolant and oil, engine coolant this side, oil this side. If you need to put any oil in, there is a sticker there just to remind you that Mobile One Fully Synthetic uh, is the oil and brand that Porsche recommend. When pushing this down, again, Put your hand on the badge, give it a firm push, and that is secured tight. The fuel filler cap is accessible uh, when the car is unlocked. Uh, when it is locked, uh, you'll notice that when you push it, nothing happens. When you unlock it, and you push it, and it springs open. The roof can be opened via the key by pressing and holding the unlock part of the key, press and hold it firmly and the roof will open. You do need to keep pressure on the key quite firm. Um, if you break in that then uh, the hood will stop. You need to do it again. To do it in reverse, press and lock the car and hold the key and it will also close the roof for you. Just under 10 seconds from the shut to open and open to shut. These particular seats are standard for the Boxster T, so they are the sports seat shape, uh, or sports seat plus, I think they're called. Um, this has got a manual operation for the seat height, which you would lift like so. It's on a pump mechanism, so every time you pull it up, it will raise the seat up. Every time you push it down, it will lower the seat. You can adjust the seat angle by this button here, which is electric, and that will move it, the angle forwards and backwards. You can also operate the reach and rake of the seat via this lever here, 
lift it up underneath your left leg and then the seat will move forwards or backwards. The Boxer T, like a few other variants in the 718 range, um, has got door pulls rather than door handles, which you just pull to open the door. On the door you also have the buttons for the front windows, uh, the mirrors, and this particular one has got folding mirrors, uh, which when you press the button here it will fold the mirrors in. Uh, that would also mean that you can lock the doors and set up for the mirrors folding at the same time. When to operate the mirrors, uh, you would select which mirror that you want to adjust and then use the cursor switch to adjust the mirror accordingly. So this particular car has got the satellite navigation uh, selected as an option. The standard box to T would come with just a console, um, but this one has got a, a PCM system on it. Uh, front screen uh, is currently set on to DAB radio. Um, we have got your presets up here. You also have a list of any available radio stations. To store a radio station, you would simply select which one you want to save. Go back to the presets and then press and hold. You do need to keep your finger quite still. Uh, if you move it around, then it won't store. Uh, when you hear it ping, you'll see it save correctly. You have got options within this. So if you want to scan stations, for example, uh, or set up the way it's sounding, you can do so by oh, I've got a spring in this one. You can lift and lower the level of bass, however you like it. And the same for treble. Uh, if you press source, it will give you the options on audio and what you can listen to, AM, FM, digital radio, jukebox, and auxiliary Bluetooth. Uh, if you have your phone connected, that will also include your phone. The jukebox is the car's internal hard drive. Um, you ca the car can store music. Um, you need to use a USB stick and certain compatible files to store onto the car. To pair a telephone, uh, just press phone on here um, and then connect phone. If you have got a, uh, uh, an iPhone, you would need to go into Bluetooth, uh, settings and Bluetooth, make your phone discoverable. Um, when the search is activated, it will then bring up your phone. You just press for a search a new phone here, and it will bring up any available uh, phones that it can find, and then select pair. It will, it will probably, your phone will then probably ask if the pairing code is correct, which you would accept. It will then ask if you want to pair your, your contacts or have access to them, and again, if you press allow, uh, that will then allow the car access to your phone contacts to make dialing out a bit easier. Navigation, um, if you go to search, uh, you can type in either uh, a, a postal code or an address if you prefer. Um, if we select here, it will give us our current address uh, and you then press start. The PCM system itself has an approach sensor. So when this bottom um, menu disappears and you move your hand towards it, it will then um, move up again because it can sense that your, your hand is approaching it. You can play around um, with the type of routes that you ask for, um, any favourites that you might have, and if there's any traffic information, it will also highlight those. Online search is particularly useful if you wanted to search for uh, something very specific. For example, I had a client who wanted to find um, a hotel that they used to stay at regularly in Italy. He just simply started to type in the hotel name and it eventually brought it up. Uh, and that was really, really easy for him. Uh, obviously, you can see it's powered by Google, so it's a, it's a Google points of interest search. On the map, uh, you can change the way the map is uh, laid out for you. You can either use the dial here to scroll in or out. Uh, you can see the approach sensor there. You can also use your fingers to um, swipe in, much like a, a tablet or a, another device. If you wanted to check your approach to somewhere, for example, um, and then you want to get back to where you are, press the crosshairs and it will bring you back to, to where you are located. If you prefer the map to be north orientation, press the arrow, and then north will always be at the top uh, of the screen, um, south, east and west. If you press the arrow again, the map will always move in the direction of travel, so you'll notice that the cursor is us, it's the car, it will always be moving in a forward direction. On car, we have some personal trip data on here which we can swipe across and have a look at. We then have the Sport Chrono, 
if you wanted to use that on a track day for example and then we have a variety of other settings on here if we press home um, it brings us through to a different set of menus um, and apps if you if the car has got um, the navigation and infotainment uh, section uh, applied which is free in the UK for the first two two years uh, you can then uh, pay it's a pay for subscription on your my Porsche portal if when you do that you then put in your pairing code it will then give you access to, to this information um, we have got things like um, fuel prices parking stations it gives us information um, for weather, uh, flight and train arrival and departure times, uh, and even the news. And, and the car can even read the news to you uh, on certain, certain variants. If you want to add your uh, password in, you would go to options on here and go to Porsche Connect login. And when you press that, it will say create new user and that is where you would put in your pairing code which you'd find on your my porsche portal the climate control on the car is operated by the fan speed on here which you can increase and lower at the moment it's set to sync so whatever we do this side will work on both sides of the car. If you operate this side independently, then you will have two different temperatures. Auto is very much like the climate, uh, like the air conditioning or, or uh, central heat you might have at home. If you set the temperature, the car will make sure that the inside of the car is that temperature, regardless as to what's happening outside of the car. So if you have variable temperature changes outside, the car will, will maintain, on this occasion, 27 degrees inside. We have our air conditioning button on and we then have air conditioning max. If in the uh, really warm weather you wanted to flood the car with really cold air, press the air conditioning max and it will set it to low uh, and force out really, really cold air as quickly as it can. We have front air demister, air recycling and rear window demister. We then have uh, the um, direction of travel for the air. So on, we have feet, uh, feet, feet face, and windscreen uh, we have heated seats for both sides some of the buttons on the center console for this car uh, we have got the Porsche Active suspension management which is this button here when the light is on it is on its firmest setting uh, when it is switched off it will be on its softer setting effectively that option uh, reduces the flow of fluid between each component on the damper uh, and that is what makes it firmer or softer by opening and closing the valves um, it is a bit more intelligent than that in that it can actually measure how severe the ride is and if it feels necessary to soften the ride it can do it itself. So if for example you're on a track day and the apex of a corner has got particularly vicious curb, uh, curbs it will relax the suspension and then by the time you're back onto a harder smoother surface like the actual track itself within half a metre it will put you back onto the firmer setting. So it is an intelligent and slightly variable system. This is for the traction control, which generally speaking, we would always recommend that you leave on. Um, if you're on a track day, um, you might decide that you want to switch it off. Uh, the Sport Chrono package will also relax uh, some of that, of that as well, um, if, if that works for you. We have a manual adjustment for the spoiler, which will work automatically. Uh, round numbers, it goes up about 70 and down about 50. Sports exhaust button, uh, which we can do manually, or it will also activate when we use a sport chrono on the steering wheel this is for auto start stop um, it's always on if we press the button it is now off uh, when it is switched on when we approach for example traffic lights or con traffic congestion the engine will cut out uh, just as you're approaching a standstill um, it's an eu requirement on cars now um, and it's fuel and emission saving we also have the button for the roof uh, which we would lift up to put the roof down and we would pull up to put the roof up. If when we are driving, uh, we want to keep both hands on a steering wheel up to full, up to 30 miles an hour, uh, it will actually work a bit beyond that, but I think the manual says 30, it's more like 40 in real terms. But if you press the button once and let go, you can return both hands to the steering wheel and it will put it down for you. We also have our hazard warning lights up here and this button will lock and unlock the, uh, the doors for us. That can also be, or how that's set up is also on 
the information centre on the instrument binnacle, which I'll show you now. On the instrument binnacle, we have a variety of information. Um, at the moment, the, the lights are on. To the left hand side, we have got the odometer and the trip odometer. We also have an analog uh, speedometer just here. We also have a digital speedometer just here. In the centre, we have our rev counter, which is always the biggest dial on, on any Porsche. Uh, we have a number of warning lights, including parking brake, ABS, traction control, engine management. Um, they are all uh, illuminated on there. We've also got in the centre uh, our gear selection, so park, reverse, neutral, drive. If we move it across to manual, um, we can use that on the gear lever as well. And in here, in this box here, it will tell us which gear the car is actually in. To the right hand side, we have got uh, the information centre, which we can change information on by scrolling on the wheel on the, the steering wheel here. Each time we roll the wheel, it will give us a different lot of information. So on this occasion, we've got the Sport Chrono in there, and we push the button in to start the timer, and that relates to the stop clock that we have on the dashboard here. The Sport Chrono clock also contains the time when it's not in use. If we turn it again, we have tire pressure monitoring, uh, we have some trip data, we have a navigation if we were to have a destination in there previously, as it's doing now, it will show what that last destination is. We have uh, the satellite navigation map, which we can change the, the zoom in and zoom out if we want to, audio station, and then background to some uh, temperature data. If we push the wheel in on this particular screen, it will give us uh, some submenus. Uh, information would be, uh, any, as it says there, any notifications on vehicle information. So, for example, if you had a, a puncture, you were low on fuel, um, the battery was, was, was uh, reducing in power, that, that would be displayed in there. Oil measurement is fairly obvious. Um, speed limits, we can set a speed limit indicator on here. So if we go above a certain speed limit, the car will make a, a, a small tone to tell us that we're doing that. We also have settings in here, so we can play around with the way the display looks, date and time. We can set up the individual setting for the Sport Chrono package, light and visibility uh, and locking. Locking is always a good thing to show. We can change the way the car doors unlock. So at the moment it's set for all doors. We can make it only the driver's door if we want to. And here we can have the mirror retract. So at the moment when the car door locks, the mirrors will retract in and we can unclick that if we want to. We can also change um, what some of the buttons on the steering wheel do as well and then we've got information on volume, units and language. On Car Connect, which you can see is currently greyed out, uh, that is because there's no Car Connect set up uh, for the car. Um, when the next owner has the car, if they want to, they can have the app set up on their phone and there will be a lot of information on the app. Uh, so things like GPS on where the car is, you can set up a, a geo fence, a speed fence, um, Again, information on maybe low batteries or tyres deflating, things like that, that's all displayed on there. It, we can put the car into a privacy mode um, and it would be on this Car Connect section that you would do that if you wanted to. We've also got the uh, petrol range, which you can see up here it's full, so it's got just over 400 miles. And then we've also got the time and outside temperature. Uh, on the steering wheel, you'll notice that we've got volume on this side. We can answer the calls on here. We can turn the calls off here. This is our back button for the screen up here. Uh, and this is the wheel that I referred to, to change the information on the display. This is a home button. This home button can be set up to have any preferred screen we want on here. So if, for example, we always wanted to have the navigation map, we could set it up so that every time we press this button, the map would be displayed up here. We also have our indicators and main beam on this stalk here, um, along with voice activation. We have our cruise control down here. The button on the end here, when we push it in, you might see that we have our cruise control illuminated on here every time we push it in. If we have it switched on and we push the, the button away from the stalk away from us, that will engage speed. Pulling it towards us will decrease speed. Pushing it up will resume and pulling it down will switch it off. We can also switch it off through touching the brakes. If it were a manual when you engage, engage the clutch, that will also switch off the cruise control. 
On the right hand side we have our windscreen wipers. If we didn't have a multifunction steering wheel there would be a second stalk here which would control the information, information centre up here. Uh, because the car has sport chrono package we also have the dial here which at the moment is switched off. If we turn it once it puts it onto sport, then sport plus and then an individual setting. On the sport it basically makes the responsive nature of the car enhanced so you will have a slightly more sensitive accelerator um, you will also have um, slightly sensitive braking um, if we turn it to sport plus it will again um, activate the active suspension it will turn off the auto start stop it will start the sports exhaust and it also relaxes the PSM so if for example you're on a track day and you have a little bit of lateral movement uh, any intervention by PSM will be relaxed uh, and will take longer uh, and that's to prevent the car constantly nipping at the brakes. Uh, some people might consider that it will spoil the fun, um, it, will, it will enhance bat uh, brake degradation as well, um, so some people prefer that. Uh, under Sport Plus what you'll find is that the rev range um, for the car will constantly be sort of between three and a half and six and a half thousand revs. Um, you're asking the car to deliver everything that it's got in effect. Um, and it, it, it thinks that you're looking for a particularly spirited drive. On the dashboard to the side here, we've got the lights. Uh, we have off, auto, side lights and main lights, and then we have our fog lights as well. On the other side of the dashboard, we have got the cup holders and glove box. Uh, to open up the cup holders, we will pop that cover down. Uh, we can adjust the size of the bottle or the cup that you can hold, and then to close it, you just pop it in like so, and pull that closed. In the glove box, most of the time you'll find this is where the user manuals are kept. Uh, you have also got, uh, just here, a USB port and uh, an auxiliary jack as well. In the upper console here, you will see that we've got some interior lighting, uh, which are just here. Uh, we can change the way the interior lights work when we open and close the doors. And we also have a button here to switch off the parking assistance if we want to. Uh, if, for example, we might have a, a long drive and overhanging branches from hedgerows, constantly setting off the park assist, you can switch it off um, through pressing that button. We can open the centre armrest via the small button on the side here, which we would lift up. Uh, underneath here we have got uh, your storage tray. We also have got here a USB slot. Um, if you connect your power cable or lightning cable on here, uh, that would be how you would connect up for Apple CarPlay on the car. I hope you found that hand of the video useful. Uh, if you do have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Uh, or pop a note in the comment section. Thanks very much.